Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, welcome to a new episode from the second series of Know Your Prophet. We are up to the 42nd chapter of Shama'il and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Al Imam at Tirmidhi. Babu ma jaa fi buka'i Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That which has been narrated regarding the crying and the weeping of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a person who was known to cry, he was known to weep. And he set this example of having this emotion of being fearful of Allah Azza wa Jal, of weeping in a way that is appropriate and a way that is in accordance with the rules of the Sharia. Unfortunately, this is something we've also lost. We've become hard-hearted in many regards, and particularly among men. It's very rare that you find people who cry and who weep. And yet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to weep. But this weeping did not reach the level of wailing. As wailing is forbidden in Islam, the wailing and the beating of the chest and the ripping of the clothes and the slapping of the face, these are the actions of the people of Jahiliyyah. And this is what people used to do when someone would die. And until this day in many Muslim cultures, it is extremely, extremely common that people slap their faces, they rip their clothes, and they wail and scream over the dead. As for the Prophet wasallam, he would weep and his weeping would make a sound, but it would be a soft sound and it would not reach the level of wailing, nor would it be accompanied by words that reject Qadr, such as, why is this happening to me? Or how can this be? Life is not fair. And other words of disbelief that people say at times of emotional distress. And sometimes the Prophet ﷺ cried over a matter of emotion, such as one of the small children passed away. The Prophet ﷺ cried. And this is a mercy that Allah Azza wa Jal placed in the hearts of the believers. That the Prophet ﷺ would cry at this kind of event or would cry if some sad news reached him from or regarding the Ummah or so, some concern over the Ummah and over the people. Then Allah put a mercy in his heart that he did not make him hard-hearted. If you were harsh and hard-hearted, they would have ran from around you. And the Prophet ﷺ would weep frequently from the fear of Allah and from the fear of what was going to come and the burden of responsibility that had been placed upon him. And this was the second kind of cry, not weeping because of someone passing away or because of a sad news, but weeping because of the fear of Allah and what is to come and his concern over his ummah and his, his worry over what would happen to us. So Imam Abu Isa al-Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala mentions Babu ma jaa fi buka'i Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The chapter of that which is relating to the crying of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An Abdullah ibn al-Shikhir radiyallahu ta'ala an annahu qal ataytu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa huyu salli wa la jawfihi azizun he said, I came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while he was praying and his chest was making a sound like the sound of the boiling pot from crying. When you have a pot or a pan or a kettle that is boiling and it makes that sort of gentle whistling sound of the air, the hot air or the hot steam escaping the pot, that gentle sort of whistling sound, this is the sound that came from the chest of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from crying while he was praying. 
وعن عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه أنه قال قال لي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اقرأ علي عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه said the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said to me read the Quran to me فقلت يا رسول الله أقرأ عليك وعليك أنزل I said to him, O oh Messenger of Allah, how can I read to you when the Quran was revealed to you? SubhanAllah, you asked me to read Quran, but Quran was revealed to you. I feel shy to read to you when you are the one that the Quran was revealed to. He said, I love to hear the Quran from someone apart from me. He said, So I read Surah An Nisa. حتى بلغت until I reached the ayah وجئنا بك على هؤلاء شهيدا Allah Azza wa Jal said so how will it be when we bring over every nation a witness and we bring you as a witness over all of them قال فرأيت عيني رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تهملان He said I saw the two eyes of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم shedding tears and that is because the Prophet ﷺ feared the huge responsibility that Allah Azza wa Jal had placed over him, the huge burden that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had entrusted him with, and he was able to fulfill it. ﷺ. But he felt the burden that Allah Azza wa Jal had placed. He felt the weight of the responsibility of being a witness over all of mankind. And he began to cry sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until his eyes were wet with tears. وعن عبد الله بن عمر أنه قال إن كسفت الشمس يوما على عهد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصلي حتى لم يكد يركع ثم ركع فَلَمْ يَكَدْ يَرْفَعْ He said, the sun was eclipsed one day during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ began to pray. And he stood until we thought he would not make ruku'ah. Then he made ruku' as though he was not going to raise himself up from ruku' again. Then he raised up his head from ruku' فَلَمْ يَكَدْ أَنْ يَسْجُدْ and we thought he was not going to go into sujood. Thumma sajad. Then he went into sujood. Falam yakad an yarfa' ra'sah. And we thought that he was not going to raise his head from sujood. Thumma rafa' ra'sah. Then he raised his head from sujood. Falam yakad an yasjud. Then it was as if he was not going to make sajda after that. Thumma sajad. Falam yakad an yarfa' ra'sah. Then he made sajda and it was as though he was not going to raise his head from sujood. فَجَعَلَ يَنْفَخُ وَيَبْكِي وَيَقُولُ And then he began to lose his breath and he began to cry sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he was really affected emotionally and he began to lose his, his breath. His breath became short and he began to cry and weep sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَيَقُولُ And he began to say, Rabbi, alam ta'idni an la tu'adhibuhum wa ana fihim. O my Lord, did you not promise me that you would not punish me when I was among them? Rabbi, alam ta'idni an la tu'adhibuhum wa hum yastaghfirun. O my Lord, did you not promise me that you would not punish them while they were seeking forgiveness? Wa nahnu nastaghfiruk. And we are seeking your forgiveness. فَلَمَّا صَلَّى رَكْعَتَيْنْ إِنْ جَلَتِ الشَّمْسِ فَقَامَ فَحَمِدَ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى وَأَثْنَى عَلَيْهِ ثُمَّ قَالْ إِنَّ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ آيَتَانِ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ لَا يَنْكَسِفَانِ لِمَوْتِ أَحَدٍ وَلَا لِحَيَاتِهِ فَإِذَا انْكَسَفَ فَافْزَعُوا إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ the Prophet ﷺ began to say, Oh my Lord, did you not promise me that you would not punish them when I am among them? Oh my Lord, did you not promise me 
that you would not punish them while they seek forgiveness and we are seeking your forgiveness. So when he had prayed two rak'ah, the sun became uncovered and the Prophet ﷺ stood and praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah is deserving of praise. And then he said, indeed, the sun and the moon are two signs from the signs of Allah. They do not eclipse for the death of anyone nor for his life. So if they eclipse, then rush to the remembrance of Allah. Subhanallah, look at how the Prophet ﷺ feared the punishment of Allah for his ummah. Feared that something would afflict his ummah of this punishment. And he begged Allah and he wept and he cried for the sake of his ummah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And we will continue this topic of the weeping of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam after the break. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. is the cornerstone for a successful society. How can we maintain a successful marriage? Join us in this journey where we learn how to plan for it, execute it, maintain it, and end it according to Islam. Grasp the unique philosophy of Islam to make marriages successful in marriage and divorce. Tomorrow at 11 p.m. and repeat telecast at 5 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Where truth is hidden, and misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulated scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth? And who has the courage to expose it? Because it's your right to know the truth. Right. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik. Tonight at 9 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. In these times of ignorance and confusion, we have never been more in need of holding on firmly to our Islamic belief. simple things that define you as a Muslim and teaching them to our families and our children. Join me, Muhammad Tim Humble, as we go back to basics in the basics of a Muslim's belief. Polish your personality in the light of divine wisdom to live like a true Muslim in the basics of a Muslim's belief. Tomorrow at 7 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12 p.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And now we come to the hadith of Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma. Annahu qal, akhadha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ابنة له تقضي. The Prophet ﷺ picked up ابنة 
Ibna means daughter, but in here it means granddaughter, and Allah Azza wa knows best that he picked up his granddaughter who was dying. So the Prophet ﷺ picked her up and brought her into his arms. And the little girl, she died when she was in the arms of the Prophet ﷺ. Ummu Ayman and Umm Ayman she began to weep Faqala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her Atabkina inda rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are you crying in front of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Faqalat alastu araka tabki O messenger of Allah I see that you too are crying قَالَ إِنِّي لَسْتُ أَبْكِ إِنَّمَا هِيَ رَحْمَةً He said, I am not crying, i.e. I am not wailing over the dead or lamenting the dead or crying for a prohibited reason. إِنَّمَا هِيَ رَحْمَةً This is just a mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put. إِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنْ بِكُلِّ خَيْرٍ عَلَى كُلِّ حَالٍ a Muslim or a believer is in the best situation in every circumstance. Inna nafsahu tunza'u bayna jambay wa huwa yahmadu Allah azza wa jal. A person's soul is being taken from him while he is praising Allah azza wa jal. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith, his granddaughter was presented to him and he took his granddaughter into his arms and she radiallahu anha passed away in his arms and um ayman saw the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with tears in his eyes and so she began to cry loudly the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to her why are you crying in front of the messenger of allah she said do i not see you crying I can see you crying, so I'm crying. The Prophet ﷺ said, this crying I'm doing is not wailing, nor is it crying. It is a mercy. And the believer is in a good situation in every circumstance. Even if a soul is being taken from within its body, from between its two sides, then they remain in the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the state of the believer. Our crying, brothers and sisters, is not a crying out of lamenting for wishing Qadr was different or lamenting for the dead or wailing over the dead. Rather, it is a mercy that we have a love for our brothers and sisters and that we feel difficulties when bad things happen to them and we feel upset about it and we cry without going over the limits of the Sharia. And that is what the Prophet ﷺ showed us in this hadith. وعن عائشة رضي الله عنها أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قبل عثمان ابن مذعون وهو ميت وهو يبكي أو قال عيناه تهرقان عائشة narrates that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم kissed Uthman ibn مذعون he kissed him while he had passed away or after he had passed away and he was crying or it was said that his eyes were shedding tears and this is another example of the softness in the heart of the prophet ﷺ for his companions that he felt emotion that he felt a mercy towards them that he felt upset when something upset them and this is a normal and natural and beautiful mercy that allah places within the hearts of people and when it goes outside of the limits of Allah and it leads to wailing and people making negative statements about Qadr, people saying, why is this happening to me? Don't deserve this. Slapping themselves, cutting themselves, ripping their clothes, beating themselves. All of these things are haram. As for the Prophet ﷺ, when one of his beloved companions passed away, like Uthman ibn Mab'oon radiallahu ta'ala an, or like his granddaughter who passed away, he would softly shed tears, as was his nature, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
without making any statements against Allah or without making any statements about Qadr or without going to any excess. And he questioned her regarding her crying at the time of the death of his granddaughter. And she said, do I not see you cry? And he said, the crying that I am doing is a permissible form of mercy which Allah has put into the hearts of the believers. وعن أنس ابن مالك رضي الله عنه أنه قال شهدنا ابنة لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم جالس على القبر فرأيت عينيه تدمعان فقال أفيكم لم يقارف الليلة قال أبو طلحة أنا فقال انزل فنزل في قبرها رضي الله تعالى عنه عن أنس بن مالك who said we attended the funeral of the daughter of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم was sitting by the grave the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم turned to his companions and said is there any of you who have not had intimate relations last night? Abu Talha said, I did not. Then the Prophet ﷺ requested him to climb down into the grave to place the body. The shahid, the point of this particular hadith is the statement regarding when the Prophet ﷺ was burying Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha, he was sat beside the grave and tears were flowing from his eyes. So this is from the mercy again of the Prophet ﷺ towards his companions, towards his family. And this again distinguishes for us the permissible types of crying that the Prophet ﷺ did from the impermissible types of crying. Brothers and sisters, it's very sad that in this day and age we see people cry less and less over the fear of Allah. And yet we see people who are paid to come and wail over the dead. We see people at a funeral, relatives who did not even like the other relative. And yet they sit and they wail and they scream and they slap themselves, cut themselves, scratch themselves, beat themselves and wail. And yet when the ayat of the hellfire are mentioned, when the ayat of paradise are mentioned, you find that they do not cry, it does not emotionally affect them. And there is a fear that the heart becomes hard. So one person might ask in conclusion to this episode, okay, so how can we soften our hearts? How can we become people who are soft and who are in touch with our emotions and who cry for the sake of Allah in a way that is rewarded by Allah? So we say there are a couple of things. One is by reading the seerah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the crying of the Messenger of Allah and his companions. One is by reading the chapter of heart softness, al raqaiq heart softness, in the books of hadith, like Al-Bukhari and Muslim and other books, which contain heart softness and things which melt the heart and soften the heart. From this is to read the stories of the people who came before us, from the companions and the tabi'een, who cried and this heart softness and soft things that made them cry and finally from this is ourselves to make ourselves cry and this is different from making yourself wail over someone else but privately to make yourself cry because of course we know that the one who cries when he is alone and he remembers Allah and then his eyes shed tears this person will be rewarded by being shaded on the day when there is no shade but the shade of Allah so this can be by making ourselves cry. However, making ourselves cry should be seen as something to be done alone between you and Allah and something that is a stepping stone to finding that softness in the heart. And of course, from the methods the Prophet ﷺ also mentioned is to be good to the orphans, to visit the orphans, to pay attention to the orphans, for this will soften your heart and stop the hardness of the heart and likewise visiting the poor, the sick and so on and so forth is from those things which softens the heart. So we ask Allah to bless us with the gift of being able to cry for his sake, to make it sincerely for him alone, and not to make us suffer from the hardness of the heart. 
and for us to take the example of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the way that he did so. That's all I have time for in this episode. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Of Nuh, peace be 